Hello, your friendly local bookseller here, and today I'm going to talk to you about mending. So uh, many of you may have found yourself spending a little more time at home than usual, so I'd like to show you one of my favorite things to do when I have some spare time on my hand, which is mend all the holes that my cats have ripped in my clothing. So I have some awesome books for you to look at today. Um, we have a huge range of amazing mending books in store that cover everything from denim to bags to socks. My personal favorite is this one, Modern Mending by Erin Lewis Fitzgerald. This is actually by a local Australian author and it's a gorgeous book that will take you from A to Z and show you how to fix absolutely any problem with a garment. Um, she covers dozens of different styles of mending and she makes it really simple and easy. My mom actually tried to teach me how to do mending when I was little, but I was like mostly focused on Pokemon at the time, so I didn't really pay attention. But with this book, I found it really easy to pick it up and I was turning my disgusting sweaters into adorable works of art in no time. Okay, so today I'm gonna show you how I generally mend something. So you only need a few materials to mend. First of all, what you're gonna need is some yarn. So you can use any kind of yarn you like. There are some yarns that are specifically made for mending, like these ones, they're called darning yarns. They come in a huge range of colors and sizes. Um, this is a two-ply, which tends to go well with most socks or more delicate garments. You can also use tapestry wool, the kind that's sold for embroidery or you can just use straight up knitting yarn. Um, this works really well for if you're knitting like a big, um, mending a hole in a big chunky sweater. I also really like to use like hand dyed variegated yarn like this, cause you end up with a really cool effect. Second thing you're going to need is a darning egg or mushroom. Um, so basically what you use these for is you pop them inside whatever it is you're mending and then you use them as something to press against while you're sewing. Um, you can get these for a couple of dollars from any craft store, or you can also often find them at like yard sales and secondhand stores. And if you can't find one right now, honestly, like anything that's small and wooden will work just fine. Then of course, you're gonna need a little pair of scissors just for snipping the thread and some darning needles. Darning needles are different from regular needles because they tend to be larger and have a blunt tip, which is fantastic if, like me, you're very prone to stabbing yourself. This also means it's a pretty appropriate craft to teach young children as they're unlikely to be able to injure themselves too badly. The last thing you're gonna need is a little bit of elastic. You're gonna use this to hold your darning egg or mushroom in place, or if you don't have any elastic to hand, you can just use a hair tie just as good. Okay, so what I'm going to be mending today is this gorgeous sock which has a hole in it. Oh no, you may think, you're going to have to throw that sock in the trash and go back to the sock factory and buy more socks. No, not anymore. We're going to take our darning egg and pop it inside the sock. Get it down there and we found the hole and I'm just gonna wiggle the egg around until it's in a comfortable position like this and take my hair tie, wrap it around the egg and so we've got the hole stretched nice and tight. Okay, so that's what we're gonna be darning. Now I have a lot of gorgeous options for thread here but I think I'm gonna go with the red. It's very like Handmaid's Tale. Okay, so take your darning needle and thread it. All right, and what we're going to start by doing is a very simple overhand stitch. So I'm going to choose where I want to start, and I think I'm going to start right about here, and I'm going to go in and out and pull the yarn through and make sure I leave enough on the tail of the end that I'm gonna be able to tuck that in again later. And then I'm gonna go back a little and stitch in. 
Now, if I was being really fussy, I would probably be counting the stitches and making this perfect, but I've decided to go for a more wabi-sabi approach, and plus it's my socks and no one really cares, so I'm just going to freestyle it. Cool, so I've gotten a bit past the hole, so I'm gonna turn around and keep going back. So just remember that for this stitch, you're starting a little bit behind where the thread came out, you're going under and in, under and in. And because you've got the egg in there, your fabric's not moving around and you're not gonna stab yourself, so you don't need a thimble or anything like that. Darning is a really important skill to learn. I really like walking around in a darn sweater because I feel like it shows people like you, you know how to do stuff. Like, if you can darn a sweater, you can probably do other stuff good. You can probably milk a cow or like build a fire. And I don't really know how to do that stuff, but I'd like people to think I do. Okay, so this is my third row. Just keeping going with the messy back stitch. And this time I'm gonna do something a little bit different. So when I get to here, I'm just gonna keep going straight across like that. So I've made a, oh, I've made a line. Okay, so now I'm continuing with that nice easy back stitch. Again, like, don't worry about making it super neat. This is all about just letting go and having a punk rock sewing experience. And I'm doing that thing again where I just jump over it. Look at that. And a few stitches at the end. And just keep turning around and going for it. Okay, so now you can see that I've changed my thread color and that's because I'm gonna be weaving back and forth the other way. So hopefully you kind of get the idea of what I'm going for here. Um, and I'm just gonna do the same thing I did for. I'm gonna start a little before here, doing that back stitch. And then I'm gonna weave through the warp that we've already created with the thread. Oop. So as you can see, I'm getting the weaving done here. And what you're gonna do is just continue doing this all the way down. But for now, I'm gonna cut to one I prepared earlier. Here we go. So there is the finished product. And it's kind of cool if you turn it inside out you can actually see where the hole was before. So you can see that big gaping hole and we've got the stitches to secure it and then we've got our weaving in the middle. So there are a ton of different techniques you can use for weaving. There's the one I, uh, for mending, there's the one I just showed you. There's a much more basic darning shift stitch. Um, 
You can do a crosshatch pattern, you can do a sachiko, you can do a blanket stitch around edges. You can also even use little bits of fabric and use a blanket stitch to secure them in place. There's a million different ways to mend stuff and I suggest that you discover them yourself by enjoying this fantastic book, Modern Mending by Erin Lewis Fitzgerald. Now, we only have a limited number of these left in store, so if you're interested in trying them out, please make sure to give us a call and order it today.